So as we discussed, any autonomous driving vehicle or a robotic system or a robot in general has three key major technical components or three key major uh, technical algorithmic pipelines. And these three major uh, components are perception, localization, and planning. Where perception, uh, so the perception is the area that we'll discuss first. So perception algorithms are a set of algorithms that take the data as an input from the sensors mounted on a robot. Uh, so typically a robotic system has following sensors, a camera or maybe a set of cameras, lidars and perhaps radars. So the uh, perception algorithms take the data from these sensors and they process it to build a 3D or perhaps a projected 2D semantic uh, representation of the world around a robot. So they take this data, process it and build a 3D representation of the world around a robot. And this representation uh, can be either uh, uh, deterministic or probabilistic in nature. So this representation can be either deterministic or probabilistic. Um, or sometimes we just call it stochastic in nature. Uh, so so, so the, the perception algorithms, they take the data from uh, uh, from the sensors that are mounted on a robot, they process the data and they build a 3D representation of the world um, around a robot or sometimes we just build a projected 2D representation of the world around a robotic system. And the representation can either be deterministic or it can be probabilistic or stochastic in nature. It depends on the choice of a designer as to what uh, representation they use to represent the world around a robot. So to give you an idea as to what, uh, uh, what a deterministic or a probabilistic representation would look like, uh, we're just going to use a very crude example. So this is by no means a concrete uh, uh, or, or even a correct example, but you just use a, a crude example to give you a high level idea as to what a deterministic or probabilistic representation of the world would look like. So assume that we have a robot R and there are two obstacles, obstacle A and obstacle B around our robot. And the goal of the robot is just to compute the velocities VA and VB of these two robots, where each V A and V B are two dimension real vectors. They have X and Y velocity components. Uh, now the, the goal of this robot is just to compute the relative velocities of these two ops, uh, of these two obstacles. And now assume that we have a sufficiently capable algorithm denoted by Lambda, uh, which can uh, take the entire you know, sensory data as an input and can output the two velocities of these, uh, of these two obstacles, V A and V B. So if we are using deterministic representation, then uh, our representation, uh, then, then these two variables, V and VB, would be deterministic variables. And let's assume that the lambda computes the value of VA as 5, comma 0, and VB as negative 1 and 0, where uh, the robot is, is x-axis and this is y-axis. 
So the relative velocity is computed by our algorithm of 5.0 and negative 1 and 0. So if we are using deterministic representation, uh, then uh, our representation of the world would be just uh, uh, would just constitute of these two deterministic variables and perhaps we can uh, you know put them in a vector v a v b and this vector which represents the world is just a four dimensional real vector of uh, it's, it's a four dimensional deterministic vector with values 5 0 so these are the components of this vector and this represents the world around a robot. Now assume uh, that we want to model the world uh, using probabilistic representation. So in this case, our variables V A and V B would be random variables with perhaps some distribution P A and P B. But the subscript A and B denote that these two may perhaps be two different distributions. And assuming that our algorithm lambda is again sufficiently capable to compute both V and VB and their associated distributions. So these distributions inherently encode the uncertainty around the computation of the velocities VA and VB. So VA and VB perhaps uh, denote the mode of the distribution and we can assume that these two distributions are unimodal distribution because it just wouldn't make sense to model the velocities uh, using a multimodal distribution. So assuming that these two are unimodal distributions with their mode VA and VB, where these are all computed by algorithm lambda. So in this case, our representation can be uh, again a vector of two vectors VA and VB. And assume that uh, we have some data structure which can also store the two distributions, perhaps their formula or perhaps the distribution, perhaps the sample distribution. We have a data structure like that. So in this case, we will not just store the mode VA and VB of that distribution, but we will also store the corresponding distributions or we can store the sample distributions to capture the uncertainties around the computed modes of the distribution V and VB and in this case perhaps a decision making algorithm a decision maker can take both the mode of of these distributions as well as the distribution into account to plan the behavior of the robot on road. So this is uh, the, the difference between a deterministic and probabilistic representation. Again, we may not have used a correct example, but this was just a very crude example to give you a sense of what a deterministic and a probabilistic representation of the world for a robot would look like. So to summarize, uh, perception algorithms take the sensory data as an input and they process that data to build perhaps a theory representation or a projected 2D representation of the world around a robot or an autonomous driving vehicle. Now we'll see what are typical uh, perception algorithms in a robot or an autonomous driving vehicle. Um, so consider these two images as an example. So these two images were captured from the cameras that are mounted on our self driving vehicle and assume uh, that this vehicle is using only the cameras as sensors and it needs to build the 3D representation of the world around it. Uh, so what are the typical algorithms that would that this vehicle would need to accomplish this task? Uh, so perhaps one of the algorithms that we can imagine is a road detection algorithm uh, that detects uh, the road ahead of a vehicle. So we have one such algorithm that accomplishes this task. We do not care about the algorithm at the moment. We are just discussing the typical algorithms that a vehicle would need at large. Uh, similarly, perhaps this vehicle, uh, this vehicle would need another algorithm to detect the obstacles in the environment. Uh, so we have one such algorithm that detects the obstacles. In these images. Similarly, perhaps it would be best to also, for example, for various application, perhaps we need to track the speed of different obstacles. So in that case, we would also need to track the obstacles so that we can uh, uh, identify or we can compute the movement of the obstacles across the temporally connected frames uh, 
and perhaps you'd be needing a very good tracking algorithm that uh, can track the obstacles across the temporally connected images. So we have uh, one such algorithm that can also track the detected obstacles across the temporally connected images. So this algorithm, no matter, uh, so until uh, the obstacle detection can detect these algorithms across all such temporally connected frames, this algorithm would assign a label of zero to this truck, a label of one to this bike, and three and two uh, similarly to the other two detected obstacles. Now, one more algorithm that perhaps we may need uh, is a terrain mapping algorithm that can build a terrain map uh, for some of the regions in an image. For example, uh, typically, I mean, if you are driving a vehicle in India, you would know that uh, sometimes you have to yield away uh, to, an, uh, to, to a truck that is coming from the other direction. And since this road is too narrow, perhaps our vehicle may need to go off roads in some cases at some point, basically. So in that case, uh, we would need an algorithm that can build a terrain map of these side regions so that uh, if a vehicle needs to go off-road it can identify uh, the terrain map or the kind of terrain uh, that there is um, so that uh, it can know okay if there is any break or a big stone on in that particular region which may damage the vehicle so if that is the case then the, perhaps the vehicle would slow down or stop and uh, perhaps execute a maneuver to, to avoid that obstacle in these side off-road regions. Uh, similarly, perhaps we may need another algorithm since we have an autonomous driving vehicle. Uh, we would need an algorithm to detect the traffic sign boards and the traffic signs. So perhaps we, we would need one algorithm that can detect these traffic sign boards and then another algorithm to read that traffic sign board or perhaps a single algorithm that can accomplish this task. Uh, so you can see like uh, there is no end to what algorithms we can have in a robotic system or an autonomous driving vehicle. It depends on the application. So for example, a vehicle that is driving on roads would have very different sort of perception algorithms as compared to a vehicle that is driving off roads. Similarly, a vehicle, an autonomous driving vehicle would have a different set of algorithms as compared to a robotic system that is navigating in perhaps an industrial and warehouse setting. So the bottom line is uh, the kind of perception algorithms uh, that you typically put in a robotic system uh, depends on the application in particular. So in this case, uh, since our vehicle is driving autonomously on typical highways, we need some sort of algorithms that can detect various things in the environment to build a 3D or perhaps a projected representation of the world around a vehicle.